Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to go over things you need to know when switching to KDE. A lot of people have tried a lot of different operating systems and desktop environments, but KDE has a lot of different things you can do, and I'm going to go over some of those real quick. So if you do switch to a distribution that is using KDE, you kind of know your way around it. But before we get started, please do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support the channel by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. If you boot into your brand new KDE desktop, you're going to have something that looks like this. You're just going to have your taskbar down at the bottom. Sometimes you might have a little widget or something up here for like notifications or clock, but we're just going to go with the basis of I'm using Manjaro right now, and I'm going to show you different things you can do. First thing, down here on the bottom, you've got your panel. You've got date and time here. If you need to make any adjustments to date and time, you can just right click and you can adjust date and time from right here. Let's say you have the wrong location picked. You can come up here, change your time zone to whatever you want to, come back over to date and time, Click set automatically, and when you do apply it, it will ask you for your password. You go ahead and put it in, and then it will adjust your date and time the way you want. So let's go ahead and close out of that. You got your arrow right here that shows your hidden icons, which is notifications, Manjaro settings manager. If you're using a different kind of distribution, you may have a settings manager there for that distribution. Clipboard, that'll show all the contents of your clipboard, anything you've copied or pasted, it should show up here in your clipboard. You can go through and clear that out if you want. Lock key status, whether you got your caps lock on, it'll highlight down here. If you watch, I'm gonna lock my caps. As you see, it pops up and lets you know that your caps are locked. KDE Connect, this is an awesome tool. If you go over to the Android store, you can download it onto your Android phone, sync it up with your PC or laptop. That way you have a little bit more control of your desktop or laptop through your cell phone. It gives you a lot of different options there. Discs and devices, any USBs or external discs you might have hooked up, it'll show here. And then, of course, turning Bluetooth on or off. I have mine off at the present. If you wanted to turn that on, you could do a simple search for other Bluetooth devices and connect from there. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that back down. Wi-Fi, if you right-click on it, you can configure network connections. Or if you just click on it, it'll show you the connection that you're hooked up to, and then all the other available connections you have that are out there. So if you have more than one Wi-Fi connection in your house, you can change it from here. Then right now the microphone is going to show up because I am presently using OBS. Battery level, volume level, if you click on that and bring that up, it will actually show you your volume controls right here. Digital microphone, or if you're using headphones and you plug those in, on a laptop or maybe even on a desktop, it'll click that on and let you be able to set your volume controls and levels right here. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. Your system is up to date. It shows that OBS is recording. And this is my MailSpring inbox. Now, if you come all the way over to the left, you've got your app menu. You just click on it, it opens up. Now you can change these in KDE. All you have to do is right click on there. You can see show alternatives. And it'll show that you have application dashboard, application launcher, application menu, or simple menu. You can just click on that and switch. And then when you open it up, you have a totally different looking application launcher. And you can do that with whichever one you like the best. Okay? You're not locked into what comes out of the box. So if you're minimalistic, maybe you want something smaller. There you go. Or you can try simple menu. And if you come over here, it kind of drops everything into a category and you can see it smoothly. Or if you're like me and you need to see everything really big, you can do that right there. And that's just the way I like it. Okay. Some people don't like that, but that's my preference. And that's the beauty of KDE. You can pretty much set it up to any way you want to. Now, when you get into KDE, you hear so many people telling you, you have so many options to customize and so many things you can do to your system. What we're going to do now is we're going to open up the system settings. And once it opens up, the first thing I want to show you here is you've got different controls with your mouse to maximize, minimize, and things like that. Like if you come up here to the maximize button, if you just left click it, it'll go full screen. If you left click it again, it'll drop back down. Now, if you go up and you got a scroll wheel on your mouse and it has a click button, you can go over that click and it makes it maximize center screen. Then you click it again and it'll drop down. Now, if you do that up here and you hit the right button, 
it'll actually stretch it wider or minimize it back down. So you've got a couple controls on your mouse there that you can use, okay? Or if you're like me, sometimes you just come up to the title bar, double click, and it maximizes or double click to minimize. So the first thing we're going to look at under KDE settings is your appearance. Now, if you click on appearance, it'll bring up your global theme, okay? Right here, you've got different themes that you can choose from. As you can see, I've downloaded Layin, okay? And I've installed it, and that is what I'm using. Now, if I wanted to change that over, I just click on there and hit apply, and it'll change my theme across my operating system. Now, it also changes application style, window decorations, fonts, icons, things like that. But I'm going to show you something here in a second. You need to double check when you download a theme on KDE. Now, if you want to get a different theme on KDE, all you got to do is go down here to get new global themes. And I usually go to most or show highest rated, sorry. And it'll bring up the highest rated and the ones that are most popular in the community. As you can see, Layin shows up there. That's the one I'm using. Basically, what you would do is click install. Once it's done installing, you close that window out, you choose the theme that you downloaded and apply. And as you can see, it changes everything. And then when you open up this little window, you do have some transparency under it. You can see the purple bleeding through. So that's just my personal preference. That's what I like using. Now, if you go to application style, you've got different ways to adjust your application style. Right now I'm using Breeze. You can get Fusion. MS Windows 9, Oxygen. Now, you can adjust this any way you like. Out of the box, if it's set to breeze, that is pretty nice and a pretty up-to-date look, but it's up to you. However you want to set it up, you can. And then Plasma Style. When you come over to Plasma Style, it shows here that my Plasma Style is laying because that's the theme I downloaded. But you can adjust this and change it any way you want. If you wanted to switch your Plasma Style to Oxygen, with a lay-in theme, you could just hit that and apply. And when you come down here, you get the bleed through. You get kind of the edge look on your windows up here. It's kind of got a, you know, a little highlight there. And then your taskbar down here becomes more transparent. It's really up to you. It's just the way you want to customize your system. I'm going to go ahead and switch that back to lay-in. And then over here, you've got colors. Now, in the newer versions of KDE, you actually have a choice now to pick your accent color. So you could come down here and go custom. And as you can see, all your colors have changed. Okay, if you wanted to go to a red, you could go to a red. You could click apply. And as you see, your colors change over here to whatever color you selected. Also, if you go to open your file manager, you'll notice that your folders now change to that color. So your highlight colors also change your folder colors, which I think is pretty neat if that's something you want to adjust, okay? You can pick from any of these colors. There's quite a few to choose from, or you can just stick with the current color scheme of the distribution that you're using. Then you can come down to window decorations. I'm going to discard that. Go to window decorations, and you've got different choices here as well. Breeze, lay-in, which is the one I'm using, lay-in solid, plastic, you could choose oxygen, which gives you the highlight around your windows, or you could get new window decorations, just like you could with the themes. Go up here and pick the highest rated, and it'll show you the most popular window themes that are out there or window decorations that are out there. You can scroll through here, find one you like, install it. Once it's done installing, click close, come up here and select it, and then apply, and it will change everything across your operating system. Now we can go to fonts, okay? To adjust the fonts, you can adjust the actual font, you can adjust the font style, and you can adjust the size. So if you come over and pick font, right now it's on Noto Sans. If I wanted to go Noto Sans Adlum, I could do that, click OK, and click Apply. And as you can see, the font has changed, okay? I'm going to go ahead and change it back to Noto Sans because that's the one I prefer, and apply it. And then over on font style, you can make it regular, black, bold, thin, italic, thin. You can just kind of play around with these and get it to the way you like. And then you can also adjust the size. If it's on 10 and you want to go to 12, just click 12, click OK, and apply. And it'll change the size of the font across the operating system. Okay? Icons. You can come down to icons. At present, there are quite a few installed. Okay? I do have 
Layin downloaded. And with Layin, you get the Tila Circle Dark and, or no, you get the Tila Dark and the Tila. Well, I like the circles, to be quite honest. I like the round icons, okay? So I'm going to go up here and pick Tila Circle Dark. Click Apply. And if you notice, it changed all my icons to circles. That's just what I prefer, okay? Now, you can look in here. If none of these icons are what you want, once again, go down here to Get New Icons. Go up, show highest rated, and then it'll load up the highest rated icons that are available out there. Okay, that's up to you. That's however you want to customize it. That's what you can do. Now, cursors out of the box. When I downloaded Layin, it had these cursors right here. I love the theme, but I didn't like the cursors. Not a problem. I just went back up and switched back to the ones I like, which is Breeze. Click on it. Apply. I have the cursors, I have the spinning wheel, I have everything that I like with Breeze. But like everything else, if none of these are what you want, get new cursors, show highest rated, and they will show up just like this. And you can scroll down through here, find some cursors that you like. It, let's say you like this one, just click on it. It'll bring up some screenshots. You can click on that screenshot and it'll make it a little bigger so you can say, yeah, I want those or no, I don't. That's up to you. So I'm going to close out of that. Launch feedback. I like this one. You can have no feedback, static, blinking, bouncing, enable animation, stop animation after five seconds. What is launch feedback? Let's say you come down here and you open GIMP. If you look next to my cursor, there's a bouncing animation. Okay. So let's close that again and watch right next to my cursor. There's the bouncing animation. Okay. If that's what you want, you can leave it alone. If you want it to just blink, you can come down here, select blink, apply, and then when you open, it'll just blink. So that's really up to you, however you want to adjust that, however you want to customize it. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on bouncing because that's what I like, and apply. Font management, this is where you can see all the fonts that you have, and if you click on them, they kind of show you over here. And this is also a place that if you've downloaded personal fonts, or you want to look at the system fonts, you can. Now, with all fonts, it's going to show that I've downloaded some Microsoft fonts because I do have those fonts. So when I'm working with documents and I'm emailing back and forth with people that are still using Microsoft products, my documents will render correctly in the Microsoft programs. Okay, so let me close that. Now we go to splash screen. Now, I like this right now. I downloaded Layin. It automatically assigns me a splash screen. Now, if you download a theme, but you want to stick with a different splash screen, you can. All you got to do is come over and click and apply, and that splash screen will change. Okay, that's up to you. And then what's really neat is if you come over here, let's say you look at this splash screen, and you're like, wonder what that looks like. You just hit the play button, and it'll show you what it looks like. I think it's just another way that KDE is one step ahead of other desktop environments. Now that's done. I'm going to go back over here. We've looked at everything here. Next, we're going to go to hardware configuration. This is where you're going to come, especially if you've got an NVIDIA video card and you need to install or reinstall drivers for that card. Like right here, I'm using the video hybrid AMD NVIDIA Prime. If I was having issues with that, I would just right click on there click remove, or I could click reinstall. It would wipe it and reinstall it. I do recommend, even though you don't have to, okay, that if you do install drivers of that sort, if the machine doesn't tell you a restart is required, I would go ahead and restart it anyway. Any kind of drivers, that's what I would do. That's my personal preference, but that's all up to you and how you're going to run your system. Next is kernel. Now on kernel, you're not going to see this selection Generally speaking, on anything that you're running that's Debian-based or Ubuntu-based, 90% of the time, you're not going to see that. Arch-based distributions that are running KDE, you're going to get the kernel option most every time. Basically, what it is, is it shows you all these different kernels. It shows you which one's running. I'm running 5.15.12-1. And then up here, we've got the real-time kernel, which is 5.15.7. Okay. And then above that, you've got the experimental, which means it is the release candidate that they're presently working on. I generally stick with the one that comes out of the box. Now, the real-time one 
should be available to me probably within the next seven to 10 days because Manjaro usually does hold things back a week to two weeks to make sure that they're not going to completely bork your system or mess everything up. But this is just a place to manage your kernels. Now, if you do get a suggestion to reinstall or update your kernel and you update it and you find out there's things in your system that are acting strange or something has been messed up, you can come into the kernel setting right here, come over here, go back to the previous kernel you were running, click on it, install it. It will put it back in place, restart your system. Everything should be up and running just fine. Then you've got language packs. You've got available language packs and installed language packs. Usually you get this taken care of at install, but if for some reason you want more than one language on your system, this is where you would come install packages. You just click on that. Choose the language you want, install it, and then you could come over here and change between those languages if you wanted to. Workspace behavior. You've got general behavior, which is display information and tooltips on mouse hover. If I come over here and hover over that, it's going to display virtual desktops, configure navigation number, layout of virtual desktops. If you don't want that there, you just click on that and hit apply. When you come back over, it won't issue that. It won't show you that stuff. Okay, I'm going to leave it there because I do like it. Animation speed, you can change it from slow to instant. Clicking files or folders. Right now, I have a single click. It'll select them, and another click opens it. If you want a single click to open, you just click that and apply, and then a single click will open your folder. Clicking and scroll bar track. This is pretty interesting. You can scroll one page up or down or scrolls to the click location. Let's say you open something like Firefox. And you come over here and you open a window. Let's just do a search. Ebo Central. It pops up over here on the scroll bar. You can just come down here and click and it'll drop to the bottom or drop to the top. It's scrolling one complete page. Now, if you wanted to change that setting, you could make it scroll to the click location. You could click that and apply, come back over to Firefox and you want it to come to right here. You just, and it would stop right there. So that gives you the option to do how you want your click to scroll. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back where it was. Desktop effects. In here, you can play around with these a lot. I usually find out of the box, it's just fine. If you want mouse click animation, snap helper, track mouse, Display a mouse cursor, locating effect when activated, looking glass. There's so many different things you can do in here to change desktop effects, but this is where you would come to do that. And then, of course, you could get new desktop effects down here. Just click over, look at the most popular, and download it. Screen edges. Right here, you can trigger an action by pushing the mouse cursor against the corresponding screen edge. I only have two set up, okay? And it's this area right here. Now, what this is going to do for you right now, I have settings opened. I have OBS open. Let's go ahead and open File Manager. And if I want to see everything that I have open, I can just run my cursor up. And you can see it's got Dolphin and it's got my screen edge here and it's got OBS right here. Now, if I want to go back to just the File Manager, I click on it and it'll open up my File Manager. Or I can go down and click Settings and it'll bring Settings up to front. Okay. Or I can go to the X, close it. And I'm going to leave OBS running because it's recording and go back to settings. Touch screen. You can trigger action by swiping through the screen in this direction. If you're using a touch screen, you can come in here and set those up if you would like. You can click on that. Whatever action, if you wanted to show desktop, you could set that as show desktop. Application launcher. You can pretty much do everything that you want right there to get it set up. So I'm going to put no action and no action. Screen locking. Lock screen automatically. You can have this where you can set up whether what time it'll screen lock after waking from sleep, allowing unlocking without password for five seconds. Any of you guys that have been there and you're sitting there working and you sit back to think a little bit and your screen disappears and it's getting ready to lock and you move your mouse and it opens back up, it's not going to require a password. Virtual desktops. I have two set up. You can set as many of these up as you want. All you got to do is come down here and click add. And then, of course, you can decide what you want to name that desktop. That's completely up to you. And then activities. You can change and set up activities in here however you want to. Okay. Window management. Window behavior. You've got click to focus, which I like. That's what I'm going to leave. But you can adjust it to click to focus. Focus follows the mouse. 
focus under mouse, focus strictly under the mouse. You can set this however you want and you can delay it by 300 milliseconds or 200. You can adjust that to however you want. Focus stealing prevention. I've got it on low. Raising windows clicks, raises the active window, of course. And then title bar actions, double click to maximize, minimize, which is already set up. If you want to change that, you can have it vertically maximize, horizontally maximize, minimize, shade, lower, however you want to do it. That's up to you. And everything that you can do in here, title bar and frame actions. If you left click, it'll raise it. Middle click will do nothing. And then right click shows the actions menu. So if I come up to the title bar and right click, it'll show everything right here. Move the desktop. I can move it to desktop two. Just so many different options of things you can do here in menus and sub menus. And it just gives you a lot of power over this operating system. Task switcher. You can come in here. You can do alt tab to change your task. If you come over here, you can see that it brings up my tasks. I got settings open. I got OBS open. I can switch between those. I'm just going to leave that there. Kwin scripts. Minimize all, synchronize, skip switcher with taskbar, video wall. You can get in just these however you want. You can get new scripts if you would like. And then, of course, window rules. Shortcuts, these are pretty self-explanatory. Adding them to the desktop, adding them to the start menu. Start up and shut down. Right here is a great thing that I like. You can actually pick your start screen. With lay-in, I have this screen right here. Okay. Now, if you find one of these that you would rather have, you just pick it of course, and then apply it. Now, one thing I do like down here is if you like this login screen but don't like the background, you can come down here and click photo and it'll bring up a photo of what's in the background and then you can load a new photo from file. If I wanted to, I could come over here to my pictures, go to my wallpapers and go ahead and let's zoom that up a little bit and say I wanted that as my background. I could click open and it'll set it, but it won't take the change until I actually apply it. I'm not going to apply it. So when I change here, it's going to tell me, do I want to apply it or discard? I'm going to go ahead and discard. But that's how you change the background of your login screen. Okay. Auto start. This right here will list whatever is set up to auto start. And I'm glad I pulled this up because I do not want MailSpring auto starting out of the box. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it from my auto start. The only thing I have in here is Manjaro. Hello. Now, if there are applications that you download and you want those applications to auto start, this is where you can add them. You can just come down here and click add, add application, and then it'll give you a list of your applications. You pick the application you want to auto start. Let's say GIMP, and it adds it to the list. The next time you reboot your system, GIMP will automatically start. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Background services. Just shows you background services that are running in the background, of course, whether it be accounts, whether it be print manager or touchpad time zone. These right here, you don't usually have to mess with. So I'm just going to skip over to the desktop session. And then right here, when you log out, do you want it to confirm the logout? Do you want it to offer you shutdown options in current session? Restart your computer. Default leave option in current session. Restart computer. Turn off computer. When logging in, restore previous save session, restore manual save session, start with an empty session. You can set these up however you want to, okay? And then search right here. You can adjust your file search, your K runner, your web search keywords. Like on file search, it, it'll enable file search, also index file content. Now with Manjaro, if I minimize this out of the box, I can just start typing. GIMP. And it's got GNU Image Manipulation Program or Run GIMP. Sometimes that's quicker for me as opposed to coming down here or coming down here. I can just type what I'm looking for, eBuzz. If I put in eBuzz, it's got my videos. It's got intro. It's got different things that I've used eBuzz for, okay? So that's just a quick search. Makes things a little easier. Then you have KRunner. This just basically shows you the available plugins, whether they be activities, browser history, Software Center, Terminate Applications. You can adjust this however you want to. I don't use this a whole lot, but if you've got more questions about this, get with me and I'll most definitely answer them. And then Web Search Keywords, Enable Web Search Keywords. I don't have any of this enabled because I don't need that on my desktop. But if you do, you could just come in here and you could set it up for DuckDuckGo. Click on that. And then when you type something in the search bar, it would actually give you results from DuckDuckGo as well. So let's go on to Notifications. 
Notifications right here, enable when screens are mirrored. I have that set up if I'm ever on a dual monitor. I can still get notifications on both screens. And this just lets you adjust how you want them. Show it in the do not disturb mode. Show it over a full screen window. Show pop up. However you want to set them up. Do you want your notifications to take front and center? Or do you want them to sit back in the background and stay out of your way until you want to look at them? That's where you adjust this. Users. And here's where you can adjust your user info. Right now, it just has my name. has my eBuzz Central logo right there. If I wanted to add my email address to it, I could come down here and just put in mainstream Linux at gmail.com, click apply. And then I'd have to put in my password, of course, because I'm making a change. And there it's set. So if I pop up here and then pop back down to users, it has all that information saved. And plus, you can upload this if you want. If you click here, it gives you many different options. I just chose a file and uploaded it and it was ready to go. Regional settings, language, American English. This should be set up to whatever you set it to when you installed it. And then you could adjust your format, mindset for United States American English. But if you wanted to come down and set it up for your country in a specific format for that country, you could. So that way it's customized and looks the exact way you want it to. Spell check, I don't have set up. It's automatically set up inside my office programs and inside my browsers. And then date and time. We already looked at that a while ago when I showed you down here how we could adjust the time zone and set the date. Accessibility, right here, you can adjust accessibility. Everything from bell, modifier keys, keyboard filters, mouse navigator, screen reader. You can do all that from right here. Applications. Now, I like this part right here. You've got file associations, locations, and default apps, okay? File associations. If you come over here, let's say you've been opening up an MKV file, and for some reason, Caden Alive keeps opening it up. You can come over here, type in the file association, which is MKV. Click video. It'll let you know it's a Matroska file. Open that up, and you can come over here and select the specific application you want to open that file. Now, if you go to MP4, it should do the same thing. And when you open it up, it'll say VLC. Now, you also have patterns. MP4, it'll show you some patterns up here. MP4, M4V, if you click on that, you can add that, and it'll also add it to open with VLC Media Player. So this is where you can come to set that up. Locations, right here, it shows you desktop path, document, download, video, picture, and music. If you want to adjust these, you can. You just come over here, back it up. Let's say you wanted the desktop to show in documents. You could set that in documents as well. Just a different place for you to set things up the way you want. And then, of course, your default applications. You can set this up for Firefox. That's Dolphin. Email clients, MailSpring, and Console. If you've got more than one terminal, you can come over here and change that. But these are your defaults. That's where you can set them. And then once you make those changes, click Apply. Online accounts, you can come over here and set up your online accounts if you want. This is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. If you wanted to add a new account, you just come over, pick Google, NextCloud, OwnCloud, or Open Desktop, and add those accounts here. And then we can go down to connections. Right here, it shows my Wi-Fi connection. You could adjust your Wi-Fi security, IPv4 or IPv6. You could set those up in here as well. That's where you do that. Settings. You can adjust your proxy here. You can set it up prox no proxy, detects proxy automatically, use proxy auto config, use system proxy or use manual. And then of course, connected preferences, SSL preferences, cookies and window shares, okay? Input devices, you come over here, you've got keyboard, mouse, game controller, touchpad. On your keyboard, you can come over here and set up the hardware, the layouts or advanced, okay? You can actually configure your keyboard options. Alt and Win, if you've got a Win button and Alt, what do you want it to do? You just click on it, add a standard, map it out to yourself, control it, however you want to set it up, that's up to you. Okay, and then Mouse, left-handed mode, if you're left-handed, you can come up here and turn on left-handed mode and apply, and you're good to go. Remember, any changes that you make on any of these settings, to, once you make that change, to come down here and apply, okay? A game controller. You can come up here and set up your game controller. Right now, I don't want to have one set up, but if you plug one in, it should automatically detect. If it does detect, just come over here. You can set it up. Okay. Touchpad controls, however you want it to work. If you use a mouse on a laptop and you don't ever use your 
touchpad, you can come over here and disable it if you want to, apply it, and then you can just use a mouse all the time. Tap to click, tap to drag. This is just what you want it to scroll like, what you want two finger tap to do. So that's everything over here. Display and monitor, display configuration. You can set it to landscape, flip it on its side, turn it upside down. This really comes in handy if you're running a second monitor and the orientation of it's different. You can come here and adjust that. And then your compositor, don't touch anything there. Then gamma, you can adjust your grayscale in here. And then night color control, if you want it to run, you can just click on it, come down here and apply. And as you notice, it'll get a little dimmer. It's a little easier on the eyes. And then you can activate it sunset to sunrise. You can come over here and adjust it however you want to. Or you can set a custom time for it to work off of. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and shut it off and apply. Then you come down to audio. Right here is where it'll show all your playback devices, speakers, everything in here. Right now, it lets me know that OBS is recording off my mic. Okay. And it shows what mic I'm using. I'm using the Family 17H with the echo cancel on. Okay. Now, if I was using a different microphone, like one with headphones, it would be highlighted right here. And then I could adjust the mic volume here. How do I want it to record? Things like that. So you have a lot of power right in here. Power management, energy saving on AC power. I'm presently on battery. So it's going to give me the on battery choices. Screen energy saving, switch it off after five minutes, suspend session after 10. This is just a way to set your power settings up and what you want it to do on AC, on battery and on low battery. That's really up to you and how you want to set it up. Activity power settings. Do not use them. You can define a special behavior if you would like. Never turn off the screen. Never shut down the computer. This is just really up to you how you want to set that up. And then, of course, your advanced power settings. Low level, 10%. Critical level, 5 What do you want it to do at the critical level? Do you want it to hibernate? Do you want it to do nothing? Do you want it to shut down? That's truly up to you, however you want to set that up. And then pause media players when suspending. I have that enabled. So if VLC or something's playing and the computer suspends, it doesn't sit there and it keeps playing audio or something like that. And then Bluetooth, this is where you come over and you can enable the Bluetooth and then sync it up with other devices. KDE Connect, we went over. Printers, this is where you would click to add a printer. Okay. And then removable storage. Device actions, you can browse it with a file manager. Download photos with GwynView. It just kind of lets you set everything up here. Digital camera, if you wanted to add one of those, you could. And then removable devices. I don't have any plugged in at the moment, but if a USB is plugged in, it would pop up over here and show you that it's plugged in. And then you've got about system and then system D. But that pretty much covers everything that you can adjust in settings on KDE. And it pretty much covers what you need to know if you're switching to KDE. There are a few other things you could take a look at, like if you opened up Dolphin, the different options and things that you have with different applications and things like that. But I was wanting to show you the basics of what you're going to look forward to and how you can customize KDE and how you can set it up to make it work for you as opposed to against you. Now, if there's something you don't think I covered in this video, or if there's something you would like to see me cover more of from this video, please leave a comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching today. And please do me a favor before you go, please like, subscribe, or follow my channel doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I'll see you in the next video.